Former UFC bantamweight champion Holly Holm joins me today. She is challenging Chris Cyborg for that women's featherweight belt at UFC 219. Holly, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me here. So what were the holidays like in your house when you have a fight to prepare for? You know, I still went and hung out with the friends whenever everything was done. Training first, and then if I had time, I would go see friends that were in town, and um, the family dinner in the afternoon, I went and trained first, but I don't really feel like I had a Christmas, but it's okay. Did you get to partake in the dinners, or is this something where you just kind of show up and then have your own food on the side? I would eat before and then get home and eat after, oh. or I would bring a coffee before, especially because they did Italian food for, our, for a change for our Christmas dinner. I can't really have all the pasta, so. I did, eat, I did eat a meatball. I'm so sorry for you. I feel like I should bring you some after your fight. You know what? With a victory, everything's fine. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. So you'll Sacrifice celebrate now. Well, let's talk about this fight with Chris Cyborg. This is your second go at 145. Physically, what are the differences that you kind of make throughout camp to prepare to fight at featherweight? You know, I'm walking around about mm, at least five pounds heavier. I didn't want to be super you know, unhealthy food. But if I was hungry, I ate because I just wanted to keep my energy up and be strong for training camp, but I didn't want to carry bad weight. I still want to feel light on my feet. I still want to feel like I have speed. Um, I did try and do a little more strength training between my last fight and now. I kind of had a feeling this fight might come. So I just kind of tried to be strong. Um, but really other than that, a lot of my training regimen was the same. Um, just trying to stay healthy and, and feel strong. She's talked a lot throughout this camp about her boxing. She brought in Clarissa Shields. You saw her at the press conference. When you kind of think about her boxing so much, what does that provoke really in you? I know she's training for everything. And I, you know, she's had her and Mia St. John and Cecilia Bracus, which all three of those girls are from the boxing world. And it's one of those things, actually, when I used to box, a lot of the girls would try and always see who would be the one to take me down, and so it's kind of like, almost like brings us back to that. I mean, I hope she's only worried about boxing. I know she's not. I know she's training everything, um, but boxing is so different than MMA. I mean, there's a lot of habits I had to change, and a lot of habits I had to break from boxing when I made the transition to MMA, so, I mean, I know that she trained everything for this fight, but I would be happy if it was only boxing if she trained for this fight. Talk to me about your training for this fight. You said you thought this fight was coming for a little while. Why did you feel that way? I just had a feeling. Um, I mean, I kind of talked a little bit. It was just like a little a little bit here and there with Dana. Just, you know, um, I, I always said I was open to the fight, but, you know, I definitely wanted a full training camp for it. I didn't want it to be like a last minute thing. and. When nothing other was really kind of going through, I wasn't really sure what was really gonna happen. I thought, I wonder if my next fight's gonna be her. And we kind of tried to promote it a little bit, like kind of get the excitement about it. And my team, they said, Holly, we don't ever force a fight. That's not you, you always just take it as it comes. So let's just back off. And literally within a week after that, they were like, this is the fight. Uh, it's really gonna happen, you know, cause there was a lot of back and forth on yeah. social media stuff. And so I thought, well, then it fell into place, then this is what's up for me right now. Is it difficult balancing bantamweight to featherweight to bantamweight to featherweight and not really knowing which one's your home? No, I actually felt fine with it. I, I still felt like it was a, a little on the shorter end of a full training camp, but I still had a full training camp. So as long as I have that, I feel like I can be prepared for either one. Wow, do you feel a difference in yourself and your performances between one and the other? Obviously, you only had one fight at featherweight against Jermaine, but did you feel different? I felt fine for the fight. My mental game was just mainly what was off for that fight. I don't feel like I was really focused, and I think that was the biggest thing, but I still felt fine. I know I was up against a tough opponent, but I didn't feel like I was gassed out trying to you know, be with a bigger opponent or anything like that, or at a bigger weight. I still felt fine cardio-wise. I still felt fine strength-wise. I just, um, I want to be able to make sure not to make those same mistakes in this fight to come as far as where my focus is at. How do you make sure you do that? That's the hardest part of fighting. I think any fighter will tell you the mental part is the hardest, but I really do feel ready. I feel very calm and confident. Don't get me wrong, there's like times in the day, it's like the up and down. Oh my gosh, the fight's coming, you know, and I'm up against the toughest opponent I've ever faced. So yes, there's those moments in the day that kind of get my anxiety boiling, but then I, you know, I've been here before and I'm in this for a reason and this is my passion and I do this for a reason and I love it. You say she's the toughest opponent of your career. Where are her biggest threats and where do you feel like you can stifle those? She's strong, she's aggressive, she's confident, she goes forward. You know, she goes for you, you only do that when you 
you know that you have confidence in your ability. And that's a, an opponent to fear, somebody who's really confident in what they can do. So I feel like those are some of her biggest strengths. And she's been able to impose her will on all of her opponents. She's undefeated in over a decade for a reason. Uh, with that being said, she's not invincible. Uh, everybody is beatable, but I know that she is she is the toughest opponent that I am to face to this day. Do you believe you're the toughest opponent she's faced? I do believe I'm the toughest opponent she's faced. I feel like I am strong, I feel like I am capable, I feel like I come to the table with a different style than she's ever faced before. I do have you know, ring experience and I feel ready. How does 25 minutes come into play in this fight? This could potentially go five rounds. I train for five rounds. I always count for five rounds because if I only counted on three, then I don't think I'd be prepared for four and five. So this could be a 25 minute fight. It could be shorter. It, I, I'm trained for five. I just want to be able to capitalize if I see a moment to finish it early, but I'm not going to be searching for it, you know, gunning for it, because a lot of times that's when you can run into problems, you know, when you're trying to force something to happen. You know, I want to take the fight each second as it comes. Do you feel like patience is going to be a big factor in this? I just want to be able to react in the moment, whether it be something that starts quick or if there's a little more time involved, I want to be able to react correctly and in that second. You could potentially make history here. If you win this belt at featherweight, you will be the first woman to have belts in two different divisions. Does that play into your mind at all? Is it something you're proud of or is it something you try not to think about? I want to win a fight regardless, whether it's three rounds, five rounds, first fight of the night, last fight of the night, 135, 145, it doesn't matter. I want to win the fight just as badly no matter who it is. There are things that motivate me though and so yes, I wanted to be multiple world champion in different weight classes with boxing and I did it. And then I wanted to do MMA and I wanted to have world titles in both boxing and MMA and I was able to do that. So this is a new goal. Um, there's like little, little goals along our way. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a passion, if you don't have something to set your heart on and your mind to, then what are you really searching for, you know? So yes, I do have a goal and I would love to be able to be, you know, the first female or to ever have titles in two weight classes in MMA. So yes, it's a goal, but it's not something that makes the fight important any more than any other fight. Right, well that attitude and mentality is why you are a champion, because that you've always been able to look at things just as they come. Holly, it is always such a pleasure to speak to you. I'm so looking forward to this fight. Thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck in the main event at UFC 219. Thank you so much, I appreciate you.